Hi everyone. In this video I am going to demonstrate how you can perform a hierarchical multiple regression using Stata's nest reg command. So hierarchical regression is carried out in those cases where you wish to test the relationship between a set of independent variables and a dependent variable but you wish to do so in a series of steps where you are adding predictors across those steps and what that does is it produces a hierarchically nested set of models. So to give you an idea about what I'm talking about, let's consider the example we will be working from in this presentation. So the data that we're going to be using is fictional student data that contains the following variables. Uh, mastery goals, student interest, achievement, anxiety, engagement, and income. And as you can see on your screen, we have three different multiple regression models that are represented. So the first model involves adding two predictors in a, in a block. And so you can see right here that we've got mastery goals and interest added together to predict student achievement. And so obviously if we run our regression analysis, we would be uh, looking at the R-square value and testing it for statistical significance. And just keep in mind that R-square is just the proportion of variation accounted for in the dependent variable uh, as a function of our predictors in the model. So step two, I'm adding in another block of predictors. And in this case, there's only one, which is anxiety. So that variable is being added to the model. And so the R-square value is going to um, basically let us uh, know about the proportion of variation accounted for in achievement not only as a function of mastery goals and interest but now also uh, by through the addition of the anxiety variable so the R square value is reflecting the combined influence of all three of those predictors and so you can see then that model one is nested within model two because model two has all three predictors whereas model one only has two predictors then at step three, we're going to add in the third block of predictors, which in which include engagement and income. So the R square value in this model is going to reflect the combined influence of all of those predictors, uh, which now incorporates the in engagement and income predictors. So one of the things that we are interested in in the context of hierarchical regression is testing the increment in the proportion of explained variation uh, through the addition of predictors. So in other words, one of the indices that we're interested in is delta R square, which is reflecting the change in R square from one model to the other. So in this, uh, ca these cases right here, we would be interested in testing whether there's a significant increase in R square from model one to model two as a result of adding in the anxiety predictor. So we would be testing that for significance and if we find statistical significance then we would infer that the, that the uh, R square value is or the delta R square value is greater than zero. So the change is uh, greater than zero. If we look at the R square value right here, this is reflecting the change as a result of adding in the engagement and income variables. And so in this case, we would be testing for statistical significance to determine if the uh, the block of those predictors, the addition of that block, uh, results in a significant increase in the R square value. So now let's go ahead and open up Stata and run our analyses. And really quickly, I do want to mention that underneath the video description, I'm going to include a link to the data file that I'm using in this presentation. So you can download the data to follow along. And also, uh, there will be a link to a do file underneath the video description in case you want to uh, download that to study the uh, commands that I'm going to be going through in this presentation. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open up the do file right here, the do file editor with all the commands. And uh, so we'll start off just with the basic uh, model or the basic test. We're going to be using the function nest reg followed by a colon. And then following that, we're going to be using the reg uh, uh, command right here. So that's the standard regression, linear regression uh, command, followed by the name of the dependent variable for the model, which is achievement. And then you'll notice that inside uh, three sets of parentheses, we have the names of our predictor variables. Um, and, what, what, and so uh, they're basically entered in blocks. 
and notice that the predictor variables uh, where we have uh, two or more they would be separated by a space so you can see I've got mastery and interest entered in block one anxiety entered in block two and then we have engagement and income entered in block three so when I highlight all of this right here and click on execute selection then you can see that we get our output and so briefly let's take a quick look at the individual models and then we'll uh, look at the change in R squares from one model to the other so first off you can see we have the R square value for our first model where we have uh, mastery and interest entered in block one and so the R square is 0.1199 so uh, that would basically indicate that the, the set of those predictors are accounting for about 12% of the variation in achievement. And we see we've got our F value that's given right here and significance level right there. So we would, um, you can see that the model is statistically significant or the R square would be deemed as statistically significant and in indicating that um, we would uh, infer that the population R square is greater than zero. You can also see in terms of the individual predictors, the regression slopes, both of those are positive for uh, mastery and interest, uh, and both of those are statistically significant. When we moved next to the second model, where we added the second block of predictors, which in this case it was only the anxiety predictor right here, uh, you can see that the R square value uh, is now 0.16 so previously it was roughly 0.12 now it's incremented up to about 0.16 and you can see, the, see that the F test for the model is uh, indicating statistical significance so as I said our predictors are accounting for statistically significant variation uh, in achievement and looking at the individual predictors you can see that once again mastery goals and interest are both positive and significant predictors in the model whereas anxiety uh, is a negative and uh, significant predictor next let's go down to the third model and you can see that we have um, the R square value is now 0.2645 so previously it was about 0.16 uh, so now we're up to 0.26 so the predictors as I said are accounting for about 26 percent of the variation in achievement and you can see that the F test once again is indicating statistical significance with respect to the indiv individual predictors we have mastery goals being a positive and significant predictor anxiety is a negative and signif sig significant predictor we have engagement and income both of those are positive and significant predictors but it turns out that uh, whereas in the previous model uh, interest was a significant significant positive predictor uh, in this case uh, it actually is uh, a non-significant predictor so uh, after we control for that the the engagement and income variables uh, that income that uh, interest predictor drops out so in terms of statistical significance so now let's take a look at the next part of our output where we have the R square values the R square changes and uh, tests of significance of the R square change so you'll notice uh, that with the first block right here we have the the uh, F test associated with the first model and the R square value so all of that is exactly the same uh, as what we saw above with respect to the first model but next you'll notice that with block two we have uh, the R square value that's given and then the change in R square so th uh, that's reflecting the change from an R square of 0.1199 to 0.1610 and so uh, basically that R square change of 0 0.0411 means that um, that the addition of the anxiety predictor yielded a, a model that accounted for an additional 4% of the variation in achievement. Now is that statistically significant or is that change statistically significant? Well we can look at this F test that's given right here and uh, there's our significance level and so you can see that we have a significant change in R square and basically that's reflecting a significant increment in the R square value from model 1 to model 2. Next you can see that we have uh, block 3 represented where we added in the engagement and interest predictors and so the R square value for that model is 0.2645 and the change in R square is from model 2 to model 3 is now 0 0.1035 so by adding in the engagement and income predictors we are accounting for about 10% additional variation in the achievement variable 
and the F test uh, is indicating statistical significance. So the change in R square in this case is statistically significant. Okay, so now I do want to mention too that uh, if it's just the case that you want that last uh, that last table, you can easily do that or generate that. If you use the nest reg uh, command again, followed by a comma, and then use the quietly option right here, followed by a colon, and then everything else is exactly the same. Um, if we run this, you'll just get that uh, that table. So if it's the case that that's all you're really looking for, uh, then you can certainly obtain that information uh, that way. So one thing that I do want to uh, uh, note to you is that unfortunately, whereas you might be used to using the um, uh, factor prefix, the I dot prefix in a standard linear regression, uh, you're not able to use that with the nest reg command. So to show you what will happen if you do, what I've done is I'm rerunning the analysis, but I'm incorporating an income level uh, factor variable right here. So there's another variable in the data set that's called income level. And basically it's an ordinal variable. Um, the groups are low income, medium income, and high income. So you can see right here that I'm using the uh, I dot prefix to denote that this is going to be a factor variable. And all the other uh, aspects of the syntax are exactly the same as above. So when I highlight this, and I run the analysis, you'll notice it says factor variables are not allowed. So it's showing up in red right there. Whereas, again, if you're, most of us are used to uh, using the, uh, the I dot prefix to denote a factor variable when we're running our regression analysis, you can see that when we do that, um, there's no problem. So it looks like that that's a specific issue with respect to this nest reg uh, command right here. So as a workaround, what you can use um, or what you can do is to generate uh, dummy variables to include in the nest reg uh, command that I was showing you above. So to do that, you can use this tabulate command followed by the name of the factor variable that you're going to be working from, followed by a comma, and then you're going to type in generate. And inside the parentheses here, you're going to kind of incorporate a root name, if you will. So to show you what it's going to look like, I'm just going to highlight all of this and click on Execute Selection right here. And when I go over and look at my variables, you'll notice that now I've got those uh, three dummy variables that have been created. So you'll notice that uh, the first one actually, let's kind of um, look at it a little bit more closely, you'll see that the first dummy variable is representing kind of a low versus everyone else in terms of low income. The second one is representing medium income versus all other categories. And then we have another dummy variable where we have high income versus all of the other categories. And so what we're going to do is to run our regression analysis, our hierarchical uh, multiple regression analysis with two of those dummy variables. And briefly before we do that, let's just kind of visualize those dummy variables. If I go back under data editor, they have been created in, uh, for the data set. So you can see right here, this first dummy variable, the one is representing individuals that were in group one on the original factor variable. The zeros are everyone else. The second uh, variable right here, the ones are representing individuals in the medium income group, the group two, if you will, and the zeros are reflecting everybody else. And then the third one is rep the ones are representing individuals in the high income group, and the zeros are everyone else. So now let's go ahead and and uh, we're going to include our dummy variables. So actually, I should get rid of that one right there. Um, so you'll notice that we have nest reg again, followed by our colon, uh, followed by reg, achieve, and then block one will contain our mastery and interest uh, predictors. Block two is our anxiety predictor. And then block three includes engage, and then INC2 and INC3. And so the regression slope for the INT, INC2 uh, two predictor represents the uh, difference in marginal means on a, on the achievement uh, variable between uh, individuals who are in the medium income category and the low income category, and then uh, the regression slope for the income uh, the uh, INC3 predictor that dummy variable uh, represents the difference in marginal means between students who are uh, in the high income category and the low income category. So now we'll highlight all of this and run the analysis 
and so now when we look at our output you can see uh, you know basically our first two models are going to be exactly the same and this last model though now you can see it's incorporating our two dummy variables right there and so those are the regression slopes and so you can see that both of those um, those regression slopes were indicating uh, significant differences in uh, marginal means between either the medium group and the low group or the high group and the low group and when we scroll down a little bit further you'll see that we have uh, our test of the R squared changes and so uh, you know basically that first change is going to be exactly the same as before uh, in the, with respect to the uh, R square for the third model it's 0.2616 whereas previously it was 0.161 and the change in R square is 0 0.1006 and so we have a te the significance test associated with that so by adding in engagement and those two uh, dummy variable predictors we're uh, we're basically accounting for an additional 10% of the variation in achievement. And uh, just so you know, in case you want to uh, test sort of the omnibus effect of income level uh, on achievement, you can rerun the uh, third model, the regression model, uh, by incorporating that I dot uh, prefix in there uh, for the income level variable. You can rerun that and uh, run the analysis there and so what you can see right here in our output we have uh, the income level variable but then we have our two dummy variables they're created automatically by the system so we have medium income and high income that are represented with those regression slopes so these are exactly the same as what we saw up with block three before and we can test the omnibus effect of that grouping variable by using uh, this test command right here, so test, and you'll notice that I've got uh, two dot um, and income level, and then three dot income level. That's just basically reflecting uh, the two dummy variables that are uh, represented in that table right there, and uh, that was done automatically. So it's a system uh, sort of process, so it's not an explicit process whereby dummy variables were created. But basically, if I highlight this and run it, you can see that now I get an omnibus test of the effect of the group, uh, the uh, income level uh, factor on achievement. And so you can see right here, there's our F test and significance level is given right there. And then finally, if you wanted to uh, just use those dummy variables that we had created previously, uh, you could do that. You could just perform that regression analysis for that third model, and you can see I've got INC2 and INC3 included in here. So if I run that regression analysis, you can see now I've got those two dummy variables that are included uh, in our output, and you can use the test command right there followed by INC2, INC3, and highlight that and run it and so you can see that basically uh, our F test is exactly the same as what we had just generated up above. So basically that's all there is to it in terms of running a uh, hierarchical multiple regression in Stata using the nest reg command. So I appreciate you watching. Again, look underneath the video description. You'll find that data that I was referring to as well as a copy of the um, do file that I was going through.